It's now former Deputy Independent Counsel Saul Weisenberg. Saul, this is a, a striking story. Saul, it's good to have you on this show. The U.S. Tax Court already has ruled repeatedly you cannot use drug addiction as a defense for tax evasion. Hunter was not incapacitated. He still flew around the world on Air Force Two doing overseas business deals, selling his father's name and government access to the Obama White House. He had time. He could have filed his tax returns. By the way, he said plural tax crimes. What do you make of this whole story? Well, I got news for you. That defense isn't going to work in federal criminal court either. Uh, there's no way that that will be uh, used in support of a successfully used in support of some kind of a diminished capacity defense. This is a classic white collar crime if it occurred. So that's just not going to work. I would I would ignore that story. And if prosecutors are seriously considering that or worrying about that, that's the that's a sign of real, real trouble, I think. Yeah, that's what reports are, that they are struggling with that, that that's what Hunter has been saying for four years. He's been. Uh, you know, dealing with drug addiction. So powerful top Democrats can use drug addiction as a defense and escape prison that the little guy can't use. I mean, this investigation began in 2018. The FBI and IRS investigators reportedly for months have said there's enough evidence to indict him. Well, I don't listen to what federal agents say. Uh, they don't have to sit there in court and and hear the verdict. But on the other hand, the fact that this was obviously leaked by somebody in the bureau is a sign that they feel that the prosecution isn't moving fast enough or moving in the right direction. So there's some really great, uh, great frustration there. But again, if somebody on the pros prosecution team is seriously worried about that uh, drug user defense uh, to a tax, a tax crime charge, uh, that that is ridiculous. That is a bad sign for anybody who's interested in fair and impartial law enforcement. Yeah, that's what got, has a lot of people upset. And he's not being charged for violating lobbying laws, representing foreign governments to the Obama White House and State Department while his father is vice president. We're talking business partnerships in Ukraine, China, Russia, Kazakhstan, and elsewhere. And the other thing, too, Saul, what do you make of this? Taxpayers, do they have a right to know if anyone connected to the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office visited the president's Delaware vacation home, homes or met with anyone in the White House? I mean, Secret Service says there are no visitor logs to Biden's Delaware homes. Well, I think that anybody who's you've you've packed a lot into that question, but let's back up just a little bit. You really you know, you really pointed out something that there isn't enough reporting on. How broad was this investigation? If this is just an, an investigation of Hunter Biden's tax problems or filling out a form incorrectly, why haven't the broader allegations that have been raised even been looked at by somebody in the Department of Justice? We have no, no answer on that. And whoever is running such an on investigation what? What should about? be. What are you talking What are you referring to? I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking about the broader investigation of influence peddling that involves not only Hunter Biden, but his uncle and potentially the president. Who, what element within DOJ is really investigating that? We, we don't know. Uh, we assume that the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office may have looked at that, but we really don't know that for sure. I mean, if you're confining your investigation just to the narrow focus of Hunter Biden's tax problems or whether or not he filled the firearms uh, report out correctly, boy, there's a lot of other stuff we've heard about from Bobby Linsky and people like that. Who is looking at that as a potential criminal matter? That's a big question. It I'd is, like to yeah. know the answer. So the, it's, it is the bigger story about Joe Biden, right? Because he was in debt. He had negative net worth in the beginning of the 2000s, reportedly. And so then, you know, also the use of government assets to build the Biden family net worth, including not just Air Force Two, but also Secret Service and other assets, and also contacting people inside the Obama White House on behalf of the Biden family's overseas business partners, which are U.S. enemies, including Russia and China, and also other countries like Kazakhstan, Romania, and more. So, you know, it's the, it's the overseas business deals sluice through off-balance sheet shell companies. You can't, it's hard to track the cash flow. So it's not just tax crimes. It's it's what is Joe Biden's role in this and how did it affect national security? Yeah. And again, but the question is, we don't know if there's any there there with respect to Joe Biden, but there's certainly enough for somebody to have been taking a preliminary look at that. And the question is, who's doing it? And again, even if you take Joe out of it for a minute, we know that Hunter Biden was involved in a massive influence peddling 
Who is looking at that? Uh, and, and if nobody is looking at it, why did somebody try to confine or narrow what the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office is looking at? Those are the questions that nobody is asking enough about that's the or final getting one. answers to. Yeah, that's the main question. Saul Weisberg, we knew you were the perfect guy to talk to about this. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a good weekend.